Have you ever wondered how muscles contract and produce force? Well, today at Peabody, we're gonna learn about the sliding filament theory. This video is brought to you by HeartSport. So here's what you'll learn today. The structure and the function, actin and myosin, sarcomeres, and how the sliding filament theory works. So a bit of an introduction. The sliding filament theory is a model or a theory for understanding how muscles contract. It explains how myosin and actin filaments, these are the key components of this theory, work together during a muscle contraction. So this theory has actually been around since the 1950s, so it's over 70 years old, developed by A.F. Huxley and G.V. Hill. And it's the most popular model for trying to explain how the myosin and actin filaments, we'll learn more about them soon, work together to generate force and movement. This happens both at a microscopic level and a larger scale. So it's important to understand the anatomy behind this to understand how the theory works. So we have our muscles. Within our muscles, we have what are called muscle fibers. It goes all the way down to myofibrils. So you can picture this like a packet of spaghetti within a packet of spaghetti within a packet of spaghetti. Each successive bundle of fibers is thinner than the previous till we get down to the microscopic level. Today we're gonna to focus on actin and myosin filaments. These are the key components of the sliding filament theory. In this diagram below, it gives you a bit of an indication of how they're laid out. So in pink, just like here, we have our thick myosin filaments. These have little heads on the end. And in purple, we have our actin filaments. These are slightly thinner. So let's learn a bit more about actin and myosin. So actin, these are our thin filaments. These are long, thin strands of protein arranged in pairs and they form part of the sarcomere. In this diagram here, again in purple, we have our actin. Myosin, these are our thick filaments, and again, there's a protein found in the muscle tissue. They act as ATPase, which means they use ATP. ATP is the chemical energy currency of the cells, and this generates the mechanical work, or movement or contraction of the muscle. In this diagram, you can just see the myosin head, which is connected to the larger, thicker myosin body. So here's the structure of a sarcomere. This is where the magic happens. Now, we have two Z lines at the end. So you can think of that, Z is at the end of an alphabet. So at the end of a sarcomere, that end, and that end pictured in blue, that is our Z line. Now, Z lines are made up from our thinner actin filaments, and in red here, we have our thicker myosin filaments. Now we have an M line. This can just mean middle line. And this is the center of the myosin. Here's a visual representation of how this works. So we have our sarcomere here with our two Z lines at the end. The actin and myosin filaments work together to shorten that sarcomere. So if you picture hundreds of these side by side, contracting the muscle and producing force. So this is easy to visualize with rowing. So in this case, the boat equals myosin, our thick filaments. The oars are the myosin heads, and the water is actin. So the myosin heads, or the oars, they bind with the water, pulling it back and producing movement. So if you imagine this within your muscle to microscopic level, within the sarcomere, hundreds of them doing this at the same time, that is what shortens your muscle, producing force, producing movement. So there you have it. Here's a quick summary of the sliding filament theory. So this occurs within a muscle fiber in the sarcomere. The two main components, or myofilaments, actin, these are our thin filaments, and myosin, our thick filaments. So the sliding filament theory works when the myofilaments interact, with the myosin heads gripping and pulling on the actin filaments, just like rowing, and this is called a cross bridge. So this shortens the sarcomere and therefore the muscle, producing force and movement. And this whole process is fueled by ATP. Okay, it's quiz time. Let's see what you've learned. So question one, what is the structure called where sliding filament theory occurs? Muscle fiber, myofibril, sarcomere, or the actin filament? Pause the video, have a think, choose your answer. The correct answer is the sarcomere. Question number two, which is the thicker of the two myofilaments? Is it myosin, actin, or troponin? 
correct answer is myosin. An easy way to remember this is mighty myosin. Question number three. What fuels sliding filament theory? Is it calcium release, nervous system, ATP, or the sarcomere itself? The correct answer is ATP. This is the body's energy currency. Question number four. What is it called when the myofilaments bind? Is it sliding filament theory, cross-section, cross-bridge, or sarcomere? The correct answer is cross-bridge. Congratulations, you've made it. You've now learnt about the sliding filament theory. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about this topic, please comment below. If you want to learn more about health, PE, sports science, fitness, or anything to do with that, check out our other videos. If you want to learn more about PE Buddy, head to www.onlinepebuddy.com. Thanks, guys. See you later.